Okay, hey, folks, we're ready to begin. Everybody here? Yep. Uh, adequate notice of this January the 11th, 2018 meeting has been provided in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act. By posting written notice and agenda of the meeting on the bulletin board in the municipal building, 1000 Route 10, Township of Hanover, by hand delivering, mailing, or faxing such notice and agenda to the following newspapers. Uh, Morris County's Daily Record, the Star Ledger, Hanover Eagle, and by filing same with the township clerk. I have a roll call. On roll call, Committee Man Gallagher. Here. Committee Man Fermosca. Here. Committee Man Mahalko. Here. Committee Man Cahill. Here. And Mayor Francioli. Here. Five members in attendance, sir. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, would you all please rise and join me for prayer and pleasure allegiance? Almighty God. We ask you that you bless this governing body with an abundance of wisdom and understanding so that every deliberation will result in actions which will promote the common good and the general welfare for all of the people of Hanover Township. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Okay, gentlemen, at this time, customary for us to open the meeting, I'd like a motion to open to the public. So move. Second. And the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the floor is open. If anyone would like to address the Township Committee at this time, they can do so from the podium, giving us your name and address for the record. Hi there. How are you, Terry? I'm okay. Good. Terry Baird, 180 Persephone Road, the Whippany section of Hanover. <laughs> You've had a great attendance record. Oh, thank you. Terry's been at our planning board meetings. He's attended our board of health meetings. She's at our, our committee meetings. Thank you. Sign her up. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm here tonight for a, a special reason. Thank you. Um, the state of New Jersey is, uh, has regulations that they are proposing for beekeepers in the state of New Jersey. And the proposed regulations are um, not in line with beekeeping best practices. Um, so from the state's website, we have, without a healthy honeybee population, successful fruit and vegetable production would be at risk. New Jersey's 20,000 bee colonies, valued at $350 per colony, represent a $7 million honeybee industry for the state and contribute to successful production of nearly $200 million worth of fruits and vegetables annually. Um, the packet that I gave you, the first is my letter to you, um, and I would like to read it. It should take me under four minutes. My name is Terry Baird. My family has been deeply rooted in the community and has resided in Hanover Township for close to 200 years. I am a farmer. I have horses, goats, chickens, honeybees, and I grow vegetables. I stand before you today as a beekeeper. I would like to ask our Hanover Township Committee to adopt a resolution that expressly opposes the New Jersey Department of Agriculture's proposed beekeeping regulations and duly inform the League of Municipalities that the Township of Hanover opposes the proposed regulations. The New Jersey Beekeepers Association, a statewide association of beekeepers with membership in excess of 1,500 opposes the Department of Ag's proposed beekeeping regulations, as these proposed regulations are flawed in several ways. <coughs> the regulations violate the spirit of the law that they were intended to support. In part, this law states to prohibit any municipality from regulating the keeping of honeybees and any related activities, including the production of honey and other products from honeybees. In other words, the law was passed to prevent municipalities from prohibiting beekeeping. And yet the proposed regulations would render beekeeping virtually illegal in Hanover Township. It is estimated at this time that at least half of the current hives 
will become illegal in the state if these proposed regulations become law. The New Jersey Department of Ag has ignored the intent of the legislation that directed it to produce these regulations. Further, the Department of Ag is ignoring its own best management practices for beekeepers in populated areas, which has been successfully used for years as the standard throughout the state. The proposed regulations cite that one group of citizens from one municipality who had an issue with one beekeeper were able to control the drafting of the regulations. But why were citizens from other municipalities not given the same opportunity? Hanover Township has a beekeeper, and we have had zero problems. So why were residents of Hanover Township not allowed to speak to all the positive experiences Hanover Township has had from having a beekeeping neighbor? The Department of Ag claims to have consulted with organizations in its deliberations, which the New, Ju New Jersey Beekeepers Association says is not true. The Department of Ag failed to perform its due diligence it does not cite one shred of scientific evidence for any of its claims or determinations. Additionally, the Department of Ag did not consult with any experts or scientists. Not one commercial beekeeper, professor of agriculture, or entomologist. They didn't even consult with their very own state apiarist. Their beekeeping and honeybee definitions do not conform to conventional scientific definitions, and most of the definitions are incorrect. And some simply do not make any sense. Shockingly, the proposed regulations state that they were based on anecdotal experience. Honeybees are the most scientifically studied insect in the world. Why use anecdotal experience when there is plenty of scientifically proven information available? Does the Department of Ag think anecdotal experience is more reliable than science? The proposed regulations amount to a harsh crackdown on New Jersey's beekeeping community, and the Department of Ag has not demonstrated any objective reason for this explosion of red tape. So the proposed regulations should be opposed and rejected. Beekeeping is legal throughout New York City, which is significantly more densely populated than anywhere in New Jersey further showing how absurd these regulations really are, that they are discriminatory against people who cannot afford five acres of land. Why take measures that will reduce the populations of our most important pollinator, the honeybee? On behalf of all New Jersey beekeepers, I would please ask the Hanover Township Committee for its support and to please inform the League of Municipalities of your opposition to the proposed regulations. Thank you. I've included an article from the Star Ledger uh, from the president of the New Jersey Beekeepers Association. I've included a summary statement in response to the proposed regulations, which kind of turns it down as to what the problems really are. I've enclosed a suggested resolution. And I've also included the proposed rules, which are in what I would call diminutive type and require pretty much a um, magnifying glass and if you go online to the document it is they have made the document not searchable thank you state of New Jersey sorry if we could ask a question or two um, and uh, and thank you for that uh, summary complete report uh, on what's going on here um, but uh, it begs the question and, and I'm sure we would find the answers if we went through some of the material that you gave us and we will take a look at it um, but um, uh, I'm sort of perplexed as to why the Department of Agriculture is trying to regulate uh, this to one to five acres. Is it, is it a health issue? Is it a problem regarding um, it came from the public the welfare in any way? That is in PPAC Gladstone, there was a beekeeper who had um, spilled a uh, like a five gallon bucket, a 65 ga um, pound bucket of honey, which caused all his beehives to obviously swarm to a food source. You know, and the best thing to do is to basically walk away and let them eat up the food source and in a couple of hours, that food source is gone. They've taken it all back to the hive. 
the neighbors got all excited about it and they are the ones who have gone to the state to make these regulations so punitive towards beekeepers. I find it ironic given the fact that this particular species of, uh, should I say, describe as insect, that bees are, are in, in fact uh, endangered in the state, <coughs> yes. pretty yep. much, and that we're trying to encourage uh, the, uh, the growth of the bee population for pollination of fruits, vegetables, and, and so forth, which are critical to the food chain. Exactly. So uh, I'm a little missed as to, as to what this is trying to accomplish. But Several years ago, in 1415, they, uh, the state passed it so that um, municipalities couldn't prohibit beekeeping in their communities. And they came up mm -hmm. with a set of guidelines the state apiarist, the, the state's official expert, Tim Schuler, they came up with a, a set of guidelines, and those are the guidelines that we follow, best practices. Those best practices constantly change and morph because we are trying to keep our colonies alive. Losing half of your colonies over winter time is normal. So that's why you have to have like extras to borrow frames of brood and stuff so that you can make another colony you know, and, and requeen. Um, the idea was to protect beekeepers and that's what the legislation was supposed to be about. But the actual beekeepers themselves, New Jersey Beekeeping Association, um, the state apiarist, none of these people were involved. Only the division of plant industry people were involved. So what you saying Plus is they, the they, people from this municipality were able to sit in on these three meetings that they had. How far along is this? Is it a law? Is it it's, being proposed? The comment period ends um, the January 19th. 19th the, January the comment 19th. period ends. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, that's the letter. The, um, I know from Hanover standpoint, when we completed our, um, our farm and garden area, Stony Brook, mm -hmm. uh, we uh, we very much wanted um, a um, the bee population to be placed somewhere around the garden area for obvious reasons. Right. And and that's to pollinate fruits and vegetables, etc., in the garden. Uh, I must say we took a position um, after checking with Joint Insurance Fund and getting into all the bureaucracies of this that uh, we, we did not go forward because from a municipality standpoint and with a farm of this nature. Uh, with so many different uh, peoples onto the farm, we didn't know what bee stings or the effect of bees would be on, right. on many, the, the population. So, you know, we, we couldn't control it from that standpoint, but in private areas or private farms or private properties. Right. Like my bees easily come over here to, to, the, to the garden over here. Bees travel three, at three miles easily. They can travel up to five miles. So... You know, they don't have to be exactly on top of what you want to pollinate. Well, you, let, let's, let's do this. Uh, by the way, I, 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 I commend you. Very, very well done. Ex extremely well done. Um, uh, my recommendation to the Township Committee is that your materials be turned over to the Board of Health, Dr. Zabrowski, uh, who, by the way, would do a very, very uh, thorough and uh, 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 job of uh, looking at this and looking mm -hmm. at the ordinance and making some recommendations from the Board of Health standpoint. Fred, do you think that might be a, an approach? I'd second, second that. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah, and I'm, uh, I'm available for, to answer any questions. You've been at our meeting, and, uh, and I'm these, sure we would, you know. These we regulations uh, will put the onus on the town. Yeah. So in other words, if, if I wanted to have, say I, I didn't have bees and I wanted to be a beekeeper, you know, eh, I would have to go before the planning board. I'd have to do the 200-foot notification. I'd have to get a lawyer. I'd have to pay for this, that, and all the stuff that you would do to get a variance. Uh, a, to a whole, a whole other level of bureaucracy, and, and you know, yeah. That because one municipality had one beekeeper who spilled one five-gallon pail of honey. Yeah. It has become. It, it doesn't. It doesn't seem right, but, but yeah. certainly it, it should be looked at <coughs> in greater detail. Yes. Uh, I, I think the township committee's position is: uh, uh, how does it relate to uh, the public welfare, public safety, per public well-being? Mm -hmm. You know, and if of it's that, if 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 if, uh, if it impugns that, uh, uh, that's that's one thing. So let's take a look at it. Um, I will. Uh, the administrator will deliver these documents to. Uh, um, 
Dr. Perez and the Board of Health. Okay. Uh, we will schedule it for our next meeting. Thank and you. Um, if they have a recommendation to the Township Committee, uh, whatever that be, I'm sure the Township Committee would support it going forward from there. So Ron, one comment real quick? Sure, absolutely. I'm allergic to bee stings. I can take one or two, but three or four, I start to have a real problem. Mm -hmm. And four houses down from my mom, there's uh, quite a bit of bees. Uh, what do they call them? Farms? A bee, well, there's beekeepers. They have many, many of those big boxes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I've never had an issue. You wouldn't even know they were there if you didn't see them when you looked closely down the side of their house. So I think as far as safety and safety to the public, the I think it's just The only time that they get defensive is when you go into their hive. They're, they're out. They're busy. Those girls... They, they got to get nectar, they got to get water, they got to get pollen, they, gotta, they need all this stuff to, to survive, for the colony to survive. You know, they could care less about, about you. Yeah, about chasing somebody like me down yeah, the street I, on their bike, right? Right. <laughs> and a lot of people misidentify um, bees. They'll say bees and they'll automatically think honeybees, but they're in really yellow jackets, which are, which oh, are yeah. members of the wasp family. You know, so there are other, an, you know, insects that are... Yeah, and they just get misidentified, and then that could cause a problem, too. I applaud you for doing what you're doing. Um, when I first read that article in the Star-Ledger, I asked myself, mm. isn't there a shortage? Aren't the honeybees under significant stress? They are. And yeah. aren't they key to the whole food chain? And instead of promoting and sheltering these bees, now we're going to make it harder? Yep. Um, perhaps we could ask our Board of Health to speak with... Uh, Bayer, because Bayer is in the science of trying to Bayer protect is, uh, bees as is, well. Is mm -hmm. working aggressively to bring back the bees. I was happy to see them on my own property. Yeah. You know, so if, if my gardens might have a shot this so year. So perhaps we can get our Board of Health to contact contact uh, Bayer, Bayer to see if Bayer can provide some real information to get so that people are making informed decisions as opposed to reacting to a, a <coughs> pail that spilled in PPAC. Right, exactly. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Terry, very Thank much. You. Okay, we will we will get back to you. We'll what keep else? you informed, and uh, we'll get this on the Board of Health's agenda. We'll let you know when that is. Uh, the floor is still open. If anyone else would like to address the Township Committee at this time. It is. Seeing none, hearing none. Motion to close. Motion. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Administrator. Okay, thank you, Mayor. We have the uh, approval of Township Committee minutes, the regular minutes of December 14th, December 20th, and the reorganization meeting of January the 4th, 2018. May we have a motion for approval? So moved. Second. We have a motion. Second on roll call. Mr. Gallagher? Aye. Mr. Ferramosca? Aye. Mr. Mahalko? Yes. Mr. Cahill? Yes. And Mr. Francioli? Aye. On communications, uh, the Southeast Morris County Municipal Utilities Authority has advised us of the um, award of various contracts uh, for insurance coverage for 2018 and professional services agreements for accounting auditing services with Nisavaccia LLP and a professional engineering service contract with CP Engineers LLC. The following departmental reports are available for in public inspection. They include the summary of all budget revenues as of January the 8th, as submitted by our CFO. The construction official has submitted his report on all activities of the building department during the month of December. And finally, our property maintenance officer has submitted her report on all property maintenance and zoning violations, uh, her activities through the 10th of January. And as we continue, ladies and gentlemen, we have the resolutions as a consent agenda. We have resolutions A through L on page three. Are there any questions from members of the Township Committee concerning any of the resolutions? Hearing none. Okay. Motion approved. Second. We have a motion and second on roll call. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Fermosca. Aye. Mr. Mahalko. Yes. Mr. Cahill. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. So approved. We continue. Payment of bills four million two hundred ten thousand eight hundred sixty dollars and two cents. 
Okay, we have a motion to pay our bills. Move to pay the bills. Second. Second. Motion, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So approved. And um, the next item is not the approval of minutes. We did that, so that's a uh, an inadvertent mistake there. We have raffle applications. Project graduation from Marstown High School and St. John the Ukrainian uh, Church. Are there any questions concerning any of the raffle applications? Move they be approved. Second. We have motion, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So approved. Mr. Chairman, members of the Township Committee, that clears the agenda. The Business Administrator, Township Clerk, and I thank you. Thank you, Joe. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, once again, uh, gentlemen, we're going to open the floor. And uh, motion open. Make motion open. All Second. In favor. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, folks, the floor is once again uh, open. If anyone would like to uh, have a, uh, a comment to the Township Committee at this time, please do so. <coughs> Terry, go ahead. Hi. Terry Baird, Winnie Precipity Road, Whippany Section of Hanover. Different hat on this time. Mm -hmm. um, the I know there was water main breaks uh, down over by the high school, and uh, people were complaining that there were again that the water company was not um, communicating with the public even though they had been touting using Everbridge and stuff like that um, will you be meeting with them again to uh, I could bring you up to date to this point uh, we um, we are very concerned over the um, over the way communications may be handled by the water company uh, there will be a meeting with the members of the water company taking place tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock at the water company. Uh, that meeting will be uh, uh, part of our uh, members of our police department will be at that meeting as well as our Office of Emergency Management will be there and myself uh, to discuss just this very matter of uh, notifying the public in the case of water main breaks of, of any size and scope. Uh, we had a significant one, as you know, uh, water issue, water alert uh, Thanksgiving Day, which affected uh, probably nearly a thousand families. Uh, and then we do have water main breaks, which are going to be taking place more frequently as, as the ground thaws. Uh, that's unavoidable. You're, you're going to have breaks around that, uh, that may or may not disturb your water service. In some cases around Deerfield, I understand it did disturb water service. So how do we communicate? We're going to try and work that out closer with the water company, whether it takes <clears throat> ringing doorbells, <clears throat> as they've done, um, or any other uh, means of uh, trying to get the word out. Well, not every one of us is on Everbridge. Not every one of us gets emergency information that way. But even those of us who, were, who are on Everbridge didn't get any notification. That's part of the problem. You know, like Precipity had a water break yesterday, and I'm part of their Nixle came See, right out and right back when it was done you know, there, was there's, like, a, there's a there's another piece of red tape involved in this and that is that township committee is sort of limited as to what it can post regarding water company issues uh, without that information coming from the water company as the authority on that okay. so in one case I can only give you a case of Thanksgiving Day right we were impeded by the fact that we couldn't get that information fast enough and we were not at liberty to release such information on our own so okay. one of the subjects that we're going to work out I just know that a lot of people are concerned about it so thank you very much we'll try and keep everybody up to date I know the same meeting is going to take place with the seniors club uh, George Coppola and some members of the Kenny Oxley etc will be meeting with the water company on <coughs> January the 16th. following Wednesday January 16th January 16th uh, and they will probably be a reiteration of whatever we discuss this coming Friday but we'll try and keep the public aware of what's going on there uh, anyone else like to be heard at this time hearing none motion to close so moved. all Second. in favor aye, aye. Aye. very good but well, we're gonna start at the right side of the table this time with okay. our, uh, our our plebs to uh, to it our uh, committee in here and we're, we're uh, anxious to hear from them so on that note I'm going to go with uh, the Honorable Michael Mahalko, Committeeman Mahalko. Uh, good evening. Um, I got some fun stuff to report on. I got a rec department. A lot of good things going on. Um, first Monday January 15th we will be honoring the Hanover Tiger Junior Pee Wee National Champions with the parade. It's kicking off at one o'clock 
from the Birchwood Manor coming down to the rec center. Uh, you need to get here earlier though, because the roads will be closed off at one. Uh, excuse me, at twelve fifteen. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, it's closed off at twelve thirty. <coughs> Try to get here for twelve fifteen. Um, so, so people know, uh, North Jefferson will be shut down for from about twelve fifteen to about one forty five on uh, on uh, Monday, January fifteenth. Uh, please come out, support your team. It was uh, they did a fantastic job. They went undefeated. Uh, if you get a chance to see on YouTube the uh, the final catch, it's, <laughs> it looks like uh, it looks like the NFL. It really was. It really was impressive. Um, that was the first. February second, we have our annual chili cook-off. So we had several people, uh, many people involved last year. We're doing it again this year, 6:30 to 8:30 on Friday, February second. Take an eye out for that. Um, we also have some sign-ups that are going on. Karate is starting. Check with the rec center on that. That's uh, kindergarten through adult, and those are on February, uh, almost every week, 5th, 12th, 26th March, uh, going into March and even into April. Uh, karate, and also baking. We have our baking starting up also. Again, uh, check the rec center website, get involved. Oh, and one more, I'm sorry. We have a Chinese New Year celebration on February 11th, which is Sunday, again at the, uh, actually here at the meeting room at 3.30. Uh, everyone is welcome, it's free. Um, there'll be music, refreshments, Chinese artwork. Should be very interesting. Very good, thank you. Thank you, very, very good. Okay, very good. Brian, at this time, Brian Cahill. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'll start with uh, on Monday night, January 8th, this past Monday, I went to my first uh, fire commission meeting with the Whippany Fire Commission. Uh, Committeeman Mahako uh, uh, introduced me to the group and I sat through their regular order of business. Uh, at the end of the meeting, uh, Fire Chief Courtright and uh, Commissioner Derek Shear took me for a tour of the firehouse. It's been a long time since I've been in there, probably since uh, a very long time, I'll leave it at that. Um, <laughs> But it was a, a great tour. They were able to show me uh, what equipment was up for upgrade and, and, and that sort of thing, so very, very informative. Uh, I'll be attending the Cedar Knolls Fire Commission meeting on January 18th and be able to update you on that as well. On uh, January 9th, I went to the K-8 through Board of Education meeting. Uh, it was their reorganization meeting, which had been canceled from the snowstorm the week before, uh, whereas uh, um, Joe had reported uh, um, Sal Azzarello, Azzarello uh, Glenn Yunata and Gina Marie Winkler uh, were elected, newly elected board members. They were sworn in. Uh, and then for the election of officers, um, they stuck with the same uh, folks. Um, so Steve Furter remains the president, and Carol Tognetti is the vice president. Yeah. So quick and short meeting. Uh, just as an update also to the Board of Ed, they are going through their budget processes right now. So there will be a budget review meeting coming up. Uh, a week of budget reviews, I should say, internally, January 8th to the 12th. Uh, then the board meeting on February 27th will, will be where the initial uh, preliminary budget will be introduced to the public. Uh, hopefully, if all goes well, then the public hearing to adopt the final budget will happen on uh, April 24th. That'll be, the, that'll be the opportunity, Brian, for public to comment? That yes. That's, okay. Absolutely. Yeah. <coughs> okay. So then moving on to public safety, uh, just an update on a program. I'm sure you've all seen the signs if you're on 287 or any of the highways with, uh, with uh, uh, the highway signs. Um, drive sober or get pulled over holiday program. So Hanover Township Police were awarded $5,500 in a grant uh, to, uh, to participate in this program. It occurred from December 8th to January 1st. Uh, and what Hanover Township Police did was they added roving patrol cars. Uh, added up to about 140 extra hours of extra patrols uh, um, going through and, and uh, looking for uh, potentially uh, impaired <coughs> drivers. So the results uh, over that time period, there were three uh, DWI arrests associated with alcohol and one uh, DWI arrest associated with drugs. Uh, in, addition, in addition to that, there are also 12 additional arrests for other things such as possession warrants un and uh, underage possession of alcohol. And there was also 126 motor vehicle violations. So, uh, uh, you know, quite a busy time for, for just that small number of hours that they were on extra patrol. Uh, the other thing, a uh, press release is just put out today, but I wanted to make mention of it because it is very important. 
Uh, the press release starts off with the question, how does your Uber driver know exactly where you are and how do you know uh, yeah, right exactly that. where the Uber driver is, right? Uh, that is because our cell phones have such technology in it that, that there's the ability to really track and pinpoint exactly where somebody is if you so desire. Uh, the older 911 systems could not do that. They could only pinpoint you to the nearest uh, cell tower. So it left for uh, you know a challenge for police in trying to find somebody at their exact location. Uh, but now, uh, Hanover Township Police have recently added a new feature to its uh, new cutting-edge 911 system, which was installed in November. This is called Rapid SOS, and essentially it enables our phones to communicate with the 911 system that will allow the emergency dispatcher to actually pinpoint exactly where you are on a map in the dispatch center, even if you're on the move. Um, this is a free app, so obviously, you know, we, we certainly encourage everybody to download it. Uh, from the App Store or, or from uh, uh, you know wherever you download your applications for your phone. Again, it's free, and uh, uh, the, the actual application is called Rapid SOS Beacon. If you want to do a search, and that is my report. What was it called, Brian? Rapid Rapid SOS. One word, no space. <coughs> Rapid and then, SOS uh, Beacon. Okay, and that should show up on our apps. It should. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're doing, thank you for that. Very good. Very good. <coughs> okay, I'm going to. Jump over to this side, and I'm going to ask uh, Deputy Mayor John Faramoska, it's all about what? T -t Tonight, <laughs> it's not about the roads. <clears throat> We're going to talk about Bee Meadow Park upgrade. Good news is Bee Meadow Park, one of the premier parks in Hanover Township. Uh, Bee Meadow Pond Nature Trail project has been approved, and a grant has been awarded to our municipality in a sum of $72,000 to help facilitate the implementation of that around the pond, which will be a great amenity for the park, which is a beautiful park. And I encourage you to, um, to use that when, it, when it's built. You'll enjoy it. Um, my next piece of information is pet owners. Pet owners, please help out your pets. <laughs> and what you can do for your pets this month is to renew their license if they're in need of vaccinations, they should always be kept up to date. This is the month you should do it. And the good news is if you do it this month, you'll save money and they'll be happy. So please renew your pet licenses this month. Third point is um, one which is very important for our college students. It's tough getting a job, getting out of college. And one of the key things to, to getting that first job when you are graduating from college, be it community college or, or um, state college, private college, is the fact that you've had an internship. Well, Hanover Township is providing a major opportunity <clears throat> geared to our college students, primarily sophomore year and up, um, for them to participate in an internship program within Hanover Township, within our municipality, to learn about uh, government. So this is a great opportunity. More details will be posted soon on the township's website about this, and we encourage those who are interested to take advantage and submit an application. So stay tuned for further details. Lastly, I'll, appear, I'll appeal to Everbridge. Um, Everbridge is a great service. It works really well, but you've got to sign up for it. Mm -hmm. And what you need to do is go to the township's website and sign up for Everbridge so you will get notifications the township will provide the notifications to you in the event of an emergency situation. Mayor, that concludes my remarks. And uh, just to punctuate that, you can select, uh, some people have concerns with Everbridge. What are they? Well, I don't want to hear about traffic out of Morristown. I don't want to hear what's going on 202 and Morris Plains, et cetera. If you go on Everbridge, there is an index area for you to select the kind of information that you want. So uh, do that, sign up. Uh, you can get the most minimal information, you can get just critical emergency information, or you get a broad range of information. So it's all available to you there. Committeeman Gallagher, how you doing? Hey, how you doing over there? All right, good. You know, um, I appreciate the uh, extra time here, Ron, because I was unable to be here at the reorganization meeting. And uh, I'm sorry I wasn't here because I'm sorry I didn't get an opportunity to watch Brian and Mike get sworn in. Guys, welcome. Congratulations. I'm Thank looking you. forward to continuing to work with you on yet another level. So God bless you guys. Thank you for wanting to be here, and good luck. And we'll, we'll have a good time. We'll get a lot of work done. Uh, 
I hope everybody had, I'll abbreviate this because it's not the reorg, but I just want to hit my high points. And, you know, as many of you know, a lot of our reports are available every month anyway. So I'm going to just give a slightly different take on the actual material in the reports and hit some high notes and just for the first minute address the way our governing body works and how we work together. So before I share some uh, highlights of my specific detail on this governing body, I would just like to say once again how much I appreciate this great honor to serve on the Hanover Township <coughs> Committee and serve all the Hanover Township residents. As many of you know, the Township Committee form of government is very different from other forms of government in our surrounding municipalities. This committee form of government is made up of five equal members that work together on every level and then the detail is broken down to where we are all responsible for a specific series of detail. But at the end of the day, all decisions are made by this entire, entire governing body. And believe me, we put an incredible amount of time into every decision that we make together. Many times if we cannot get a consensus, we will discuss it time and time again, sometimes until we drive each other nuts. And if we still can't get a consensus, that item will not make it to the floor. So sometimes people actually give us, all of us, a difficult time about being five to nothing with our voting. But what many people don't understand is the amount of material that doesn't see the light of day on, the, on this floor because we can't find good common ground. So I am proud of the decisions that I have made going into year five as part of this body. And again, I'm honored to be part of this township committee, and I appreciate all you guys, so thank you very much. Nicely said. Before I run through a couple of my highlights, I, I want to thank Bob Bruno for all his years as a committeeman. Bob's a great guy. He became a great friend. I've always <coughs> known him and his family and known of them, but he was great, and I'm sure he's not going to be too far. Committeeman Coppola, I could say the same thing. Worked with him for years, a very good guy. Did a lot of great things for Hanover Township. God bless George. But again, welcome, guys. You were my next line. Thank you very much for being here. So I only want to say, I want to say thank you very much to our entire Hanover Township Municipal family. It's an incredible workforce. It is a family. I think we're all very good friends in this building too. You can't go down the hall <coughs> without talking and having a nice time with somebody. But I just want to single out a couple people that I lean on often. Joe Giorgio. Joe, I always say it. This is year five. You're the hardest working man in Hanover Township, hands down. And I'm pretty sure you know how much I value you professionally and personally. And if you don't, hey, Joe, I appreciate you professionally and personally. So there it is. And that's, on, that's on the record. It's on the record. Thank you, committee. Brian Ferran, I'll get to you in a minute. Brian is a complete rock star. He's in every one of our lives every day. Brian is the best. It's also a true honor to work with Chief Mark Roddy. Chief is one of the most hardworking, honest, dedicated, total professionals you will ever, will ever meet. And I'm proud to say that I believe the Chief and I have become very good friends. He's a great guy, and he's the absolute perfect person to be the Chief of our Police Department. I also want to thank Fred, Township Attorney. Fred is an incredible attorney, has become a great friend. To know Fred is to love Fred, and this is one of the most balanced people I've ever met in my life. Fred, I appreciate you. Thank you for everything you do for all of us. In thinking about the Hanover Township, DPW, I can list about 65% of what they do in one sentence. You gotta drink some water for the sentence though, I'm telling you. <laughs> every fall, they're picking up leaves. They ran through Hanover Township 22 times, the entire township. Cut grass, they blow leaves, they plow snow, they salt, painting, maintaining and rebuilding fields, all buildings and grounds maintenance, they have in-house mechanics servicing all vehicles, including police cars and all power equipment, setting up for every event, taking down from every event, decorating for every holiday, patching potholes, painting crosswalks, installing signs, every type of rebuilding. They rebuild the basins in-house, typically over 100 a year, street sweeping, cleaning out the river on work days, planning and working on the One Day One School Beautification and Safety Initiative, partnering and helping out with our schools on every level. All our organized sports, all our recreation. They've even become pool experts in the last couple of years. They are on hand 24 hours a day. These guys are the best. We appreciate everything you do all the time. And you'll hear most of us on this dais applaud them almost every two weeks for the great work that they do. Another one I'm going to do, and I can even cut it shorter than this, John. 
<laughs> in completing my fourth year of service on this committee, I can say in the last three years plus, we have all been talking about roads, the repaving of roads, mill and paving of roads, and the total reconstruction of roads. Although we would all like to take credit for this, we also have to thank Brian Fran of the DPW. <clears throat> he was right there with us in spearheading this aggressive campaign with engineering. In the beginning of my first term, I can't tell you how many conversations I had with Brian and the entire township committee about how many roads we do each year and how many roads each municip surrounding municipality was doing each year. And we were comparing our numbers. Along with all of us, in, and being able to budget for this very aggressive road, uh, road reconstruction initiative, I believe that everybody has noticed. And now, by the way, we are consistent or ahead of all our surrounding municipalities. So I'm very, very proud of that. And it took us a lot of work and a lot of time budgeting and finding the money. I'm going to leave it here. We caught up. <clears throat> I do have a few more, but I'll leave it here. The Hanover Township Substance Awareness Council, led by Carol Giorgio. She is an incredible leader of this group of a lot of people that all have a lot of different ideas. And this year, the council received grant money, and thank you to the township committee, we now have a line item to get a national speaker. And what's great about getting a national speaker is it gets people into our events. Mm -hmm. John Spear had an event about six years ago. Might be the best one I ever went to. There was about five people in the audience. So nobody took away that powerful message, except for five of us. And I think us three were three out of five. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we did have Daryl Strawberry. And people were a little bit critical of that decision, but guess what? A lot of people heard a very positive, powerful message. And we're going to continue to do that. And again, the Substance Awareness Council is very good. We had a great leader and have a great leader. And the Township Committee is in on every decision we make. And the last point, School and Park Traffic Safety Advisory. This Township Committee created this subcommittee to specifically deal with vehicular and pedestrian traffic in and around all our schools and parks. Years ago, we all compared notes, and we looked at what other towns were doing, and we weren't even close to Me Too until we got together. Mm -hmm. And Brian Cahill has been by my side the entire time, too, as vice chair. <clears throat> and we got a lot of work done. 47 improvements in four years, and they're real improvements that our families can see and enjoy, and we do believe our families are much safer because of it. I, guys, I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you for the time, and I wish I could have been here to reorg, guys. Thank you. Oh, very, very, very nice. Very well said. Thank you for that. Very complete report, and I'm, I'm glad you had an opportunity to give it because, as I said, we, we did miss you at reorganization, but we know, you know, we all have uh, <coughs> obligations, uh, uh, working, working guys here, and uh, we give up a lot of our time for our town here, but, uh, you know, certain of us... Uh, uh, when uh, emergencies occur or storms occur, etc., we're called out, and, and that was the case for ACE. And uh, so uh, we did miss you on reorganization. So glad you had a chance to catch up. Thank you. you know, Thank with you this for the time. Uh, I just want to give a, uh, a little uh, comment uh, here that's an uh, important comment. Uh, at our last Board of Health meeting, we had a uh, very involved discussion about uh, influenza and uh, problems that uh, are now. Uh, beginning to build up in the state with the flus. Most, most states are, are in a uh, critical situation with, with flu. Um, I think uh, many of us have taken advantage of the <coughs> health department's uh, flu shots. I think that's great. If you haven't had one and you're concerned that getting one now might be too late, you're wrong. Get the flu shot. It's still effective and uh, it, uh, it might be just the deterrent you need. But if in fact, um, and we we're going to try and put out a bulletin on this, Joe, uh, on our website, if in fact uh, a family member or you feels that you are becoming, coming down with or ill with symptoms of flu, be it fever, cough, etc., you have to act on it immediately. If you don't seek immediate medical attention, uh, certainly, uh, certainly remedies, uh, some remedies that you might be able to, to have available for you. Tamiflu, I think, is one of the the better products on the market. I don't think there's a cure-all for flu other than rest uh, beyond that. But one thing you do want to make sure of is that it doesn't advance and, and become uh, problematical to lungs, etc. Uh, most of us have had uh, shots for that as well. There is a shot for pneumococcal shell, uh, shot for uh, pneumonia. Uh, if you haven't had that shot, talk to your physician. Uh, and uh, highly advise you do the same. This is a terrible
flu season. Uh, don't uh, don't uh, ignore it in any way and uh, be just be cognizant of it. Uh, I think all of us on the Township Committee want to express our uh, our concerns for uh, George Coppola uh, getting uh, recuperating. Uh, George had a uh, a fall uh, over this uh, past few days uh, at his home uh, on the ice trying to uh, put down some melt crystals etc and uh, get to a meeting and uh, rushing around and uh, he slipped and had a, had a fall and uh, took an injury that uh, that uh, did bring him for uh, to Morristown Memorial for some some uh, medical help uh, he's doing well uh, um, he is uh, he's at home recuperating so George uh, if you catch this on YouTube, we all wish you the very, very best, and uh, uh, we we know you're you're going to do uh, you're you're going to do well. Um, the um, oh, this is the, uh, the Toastmasters uh, uh, coming up on Lover. You want to comment on that? Sure. Or, yeah. sure. Uh, but what I want to do is uh, again, uh, uh, Committee Member Halco brought up the Tigers. That that's going to be this Monday. Uh, do get there early. Uh, the parade starts at one o'clock from the Birchwood, but uh, right. My suggestion is we're right, going to start right, mustering closes. up around 1230, and if you get there even earlier than that, there'll be parking at the municipal complex here. Uh, there'll be parking and across the street, street as well at the Veterans Field. <coughs> uh, we do expect a broad um, uh, spectrum of, of dignitaries uh, that we've heard uh, from uh, Senator Cody. Uh, we've heard from some of our assembly people, our freeholders, uh, other mayors of other towns who wish to join us on that day to celebrate with the with the youngsters. It's quite quite a uh, championship that they won there on a national level, so we all want to be part of that. Uh, spring's not too far around the corner, and we are sending letters out to all of our condominium complexes, etc. some five major com com condominium complexes, for the farm and garden. Uh, there will be an opportunity, we're going to have a meeting on that, um, I think meeting notices went out uh, for February 21st. February 21st, is it, Joe? Mm -hmm. On that February 21st at 7 p.m. Um, over at the Rec Center, uh, you uh, if you're in a condo, uh, you'll probably get notification on that. If you don't have an opportunity to uh, have a garden, and you might not with a condo, uh, this is that opportunity. Uh, we'll tell you all about the the farm, how you can have a piece of ground to grow your own plants there. So. Please join us for that as well. And um, on that note, um, John, you wanted, you had a yeah, comment quick, on quick we were at a library meeting last night, and John has a comment yeah. on that. Youth, yeah. youth development is something very important that every one of the Township Committee members is 100% supportive of. We're very pleased to see that Hanover's library, our own library, is going to sponsor a program beginning this Friday night called Toastmasters. Toastmasters normally is a program that's given for adults, but their Toastmasters program is going to be open for high school students. So I really encourage um, our student body out there to take advantage of this. This is a tremendous gift to have Toastmasters brought to you, uh, increasing your <coughs> communication skills and developing them at an early age is a wonderful gift. So please go out and do it. You'll benefit greatly from it. Very good. Thank you, John. All right. Uh, having no more business, I'm going to uh, ask for a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Okay. Committee is adjourned. Go back into session. Okay. Oh. 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 Maybe that precipitates.